Hi everyone, in this video we'll take a look at the work I've been doing on the LCD menu for the MSU. The MSU being the uh, material switching unit and the new name we've given to this upgrade, which is a multi-material upgrade based on the MME2 from uh, Prusa. So uh, yeah, we'll talk about the LCD menu, which gives a lot of uh, nice features and uh, nice things to have. Uh, we will take a very quick look at the code if anyone is interested uh, into how to add your own custom LCD menus in Marlin. So yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so for the LCD menu, uh, right now we have three main features that are either completely implemented or are being worked on. First option is to home the idler. Uh, so this serves two purposes. The first one, of course, to be able to rehome the idler during a print or before a print so that you get the new and correct positioning if for some reason your idler skipped a step or you moved it accidentally while the stepper was disabled. Uh, then the second and probably the most useful thing that it's going to give you is since when the idler is home uh, and since the homing position is also the park position, uh, that means that after clicking that button, you will be able to work freely on the MSU uh, while having the other put zero pressure on any of the filaments. So that means you can move the filaments around, insert it into the nozzle, retract them, remove them, uh, fix a clog, a jam or whatever, uh, without having to worry if uh, the other just grabbing onto your filament and preventing you from uh, doing what you need to do. Then there's a second feature, which is obviously uh, the one to select your filament. So you click on your menu and then you have a sub menu with uh, five options. Uh, so five filaments and then you can just click on the filament you wish to uh, use and uh, it will call the uh, function uh, in our msu.cpp file uh, regarding that um, that filament and uh, it will load the new filament so this is useful for a few things so first off to test your filament loads and unloads uh, without having to to change to send any g-code so that's uh, one way to look at it and uh, the second one is uh, also if you're using some slicer profiles that are not made for multi-material. So let's say if you have a single material uh, object that you have sliced uh, for this exact printer, but without specifying which uh, extruder you wanted to use, uh, you can actually click on the filament you want to use and um, load it in. So that means you can have one uh, file, uh, one single material file, and then select as you like which uh, material or color you want to use. And then we have the last option, which is a calibration option. So right now it's only for the bone tube system and there are still a lot of bugs regarding it. Uh, but the principle is when you click on it, uh, it gives you a menu to adjust the extruder position. So the, the, that's meant to align your filament with the end of your nozzle. Um, and so you just turn it until filament comes out of the nozzle. Uh, and uh, then once you click on that once, it will take you to the um, to another similar adjustment uh, panel where you can adjust the MSU bottom length. So as you can imagine, uh, when we're loading and unloading the filament, we need to clear the merger. So we need to retract it by the minimal amount while clearing the merger because the least amount of filament you have to retract, the faster the filament chain is going to be and the faster you're going to be able to print. So that means that you need to adjust it in order to have it as, as short distance as possible uh, while still clearing the merger and not having any jams um, at all. And uh, yeah, it's a step by step process. So I wanted it to be uh, to you to be able to do that on the LCD without having to reflash Marlin every time. Uh, so you just click on there. Once you get to that level, uh, it will unload the filament up to the current setting. So let's say you, if you have put 100 millimeters, it will unload the filament by 100 millimeters. Uh, and then you will be able to adjust it and it will update both the variable and the physical position. So you'll be able to see visually how you're changing the variable. Okay, so since I was literally just talking about variables uh, in my explanation, I think this is a good time to go over the coding side of things. Um, so the, I'm not gonna go too, into too much details. If you want to implement a custom LCD menu, uh, which doesn't really rely on G-code, so with actual custom code that you've written, or calling some specific functions that cannot be accessed through G-code. Um, basically, everything you will need is inside uh, the menu, the, the menu uh, folder inside LC, the LCD folder. And uh, basically, you just create your menu. In my case here, it's menu msu.cpp. And uh, so you have your main function with your menu description and has start menu, back item. The message is basically uh, what you print on your little back arrow to go back. 
and um, the action items are um, what most of you will need. So you have your first your message, and then you can simply call a specific function. Uh, so in that case, it's the Hadler Homing, and then you can create other custom submenus, and that's basically how it works. I won't go into too many details because people are usually bored by uh, anything coding related, uh, but that's pretty much it. One interesting thing I want to point out is the way uh, Marlin works with the multiple languages. So um, as you know, uh, Marlin is not simply in English, uh, so every single thing that is displayed on screen will have to be uh, will most likely be uh, done through this little language file and you basically put your variable name and then you add your actual text and this means that if you need to change a language uh, there's a separate file for every single language uh, with the proper translation and uh, yeah as you can see uh, I've only done the English uh, version because of course I'm not going to take the time to uh, translate it to uh, 15 20 different languages uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the coding side of things. So uh, if you want to build an LCD menu for yourself and just want some advice, uh, you can contact me directly and I don't mind. I just feel like people are not really interested into programming when they watch those videos. Uh, so let's go back to the, me explaining what this feature is. And you can just, if you want it to be really safe, you can see in the bottom tube and retract it until you reach the top of the, the merger where you can actually see the filament. Uh, and then you should be good. Now you may know that or not, but if you actually turn off your printer after that, it's not going to save this because I'm simply changing the variable uh, and it's actually not stored anywhere. So uh, if you do a power cycle and reset your printer, uh, then you have the old variable that you initially uh, selected. So in the current state, you need to reflash Marlin one last time when you found the correct value with that new value. Uh, but hopefully in the future, I will have time to work on uh, storing that, this value in the EEPROM for boards that support it. And uh, you we would be able to, you would have to send on, compile and uh, upload the firmware only once um, in order to have, and then you could edit your value uh, in the EEPROM, which would be uh, really nice. Yeah, uh, so that's it for the LCD menu. There are also some features I would like to add, or if you have any features, just let me know in the comments. Uh, but for now, this is uh, the, the bare minimum that I needed, and I'm going to start working on other things um, like direct drive support. So um, one thing that happened uh, during the last uh, few days is that I ordered some uh, SD card extender. So it's those cables with uh, some type of SD card um, at the one end and then an SD card slot at the other end. That means you can plug one end into your main board and then you can use the SD card slot on the other end without wearing out your SD card slot. And I ordered uh, two of those, one for uh, this board and one for the Ender 3. And uh, what happened is that actually uh, I received a defective cable, uh, which meant that I uh, broke the uh, SD card slot on my uh, Ender 3 main board. So uh, that was quite problematic because uh, those main boards are actually quite expensive. And uh, at that point, I um, didn't I, I didn't really want to buy a new board. Uh, so I was thinking, can I fix this? What was actually happening is that when no SD card was inserted, the board was working just normally. Uh, but when the SD card was inserted, the pins that were damaged by the um, adapter uh, were actually touching each other and shorting the board. Uh, so that means that basically, I mean, my SD card slot was completely done and I had no way to repair it, at least to my knowledge. Uh, so I wanted to replace it. And what I did at that point is I actually realized that I could use the SD card slot on those cables uh, because they're pretty much all the same. Uh, so I uh, had to kind of learn uh, SMD uh, soldering on the fly. Uh, and uh, I uh, first try, I just... Um, put too much heat and wasn't able to heat up the, the component enough because on those uh, SKR boards uh, there is uh, definitely uh, there's a copper uh, cooling layer in the PCB which means that you need to heat it up a lot and uh, yeah I just I had never done any other type of NSMB soldering so I heated up too much the plastic on the SD card slot because part of the SD card slot is actually made out of plastic melted and uh, that was it for the replacement so uh, I took one of the cables uh, one of the slot on one of the cables and uh, it was done. 
then I tried it with another one. Uh, that one was um, good and it actually worked. Uh, but at that point, there was a problem because I was using Flux and Flux the, the Flux actually went into the SD card slot. Uh, and part of the SD card slot also seemed to be damaged. So it was not working as I wished. And also the soldering job was just horrible. Uh, so I said that I, I don't want to have that type of, uh, of uh, soldering and on my main board. And I just, it's 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 the risk, yeah. Um, so I unsoldered it and uh, I uh, removed the SD card slot on my old Ender 3 board. Uh, no, on my old Enet A8 board. Uh, which is absolutely horrible. Like no one should do that board. So I, I didn't have any problem with uh, uh, using it to fix uh, the other board, and um, it totally worked. And I'm really happy with the result. The SD card slots work almost as well as the original one. Uh, of course, it's not perfect since uh, I, I it was this was literally uh, my first uh, SMD uh, repair attempt, and uh, that was pretty much it. Okay, so I really want to thank Robin and Ben uh, for the support they gave me. Uh, actually, it's because of uh, their support and because of the other people's support uh, financially and uh, also in this project that I'm able to do this and that I was able to order new cables, uh, take the risk of potentially damaging my board and uh, buying some flowers. I, I don't need to even think about making those purchases uh, because I have, let's say, a dedicated budget uh, from you guys watching this um, to work on this project and it's because of that that I'm able to do uh, the things I do right now and uh, yeah I just want to thank you all of you the ones that are helping uh, with uh, building this the ones that are currently attempting a build uh, you're <laughs> really helping me out uh, figure out the the problems I have with this design uh, as more and more people build it and um, the ones that give financial support, I also really appreciate it. Um, and I mean, with that, I can buy filament parts and all the stuff I need because the, it has, I've been working on this for 10 months. So uh, the bill is uh, slowly but surely increasing. Uh, and it's nice to have some kind of uh, payback on that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the, this video. So I uh, really hope you liked it. Uh, if you want to follow this project much closer to uh, um, what I'm doing on YouTube, uh, you can join the Discord channel. I will have it linked down below. Uh, it's um, yeah, essentially on there. I have an update channel, a comment channel, so uh, you can message me directly. You can ask questions, report bugs, uh, report physical issues. You can simply discuss with me features or ideas you have. Uh, and you can ask any questions you have. So uh, yeah, if you're curious or just want to talk to me, uh, head in the description and uh, join the Discord. Uh, if you want to support me, I honestly don't want any of you to give me money that you could use for yourself. Uh, but if you want to support me uh, with this project, uh, I will have a, a Patreon linked down below. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. See you guys next time.